like a big semi brings all of our feed to us, and this lasts me a whole month out of this tower. But I, I put it in my feed box once a month, once a day. I have to fill this up. This only feeds a few pastures. I got a bigger one of these on another truck, but it's broke down, so I just have to kind of piss in it back and forth right now. But um, this is kind of how I do it. Back in the day, I used to have feed sacks, you know, and, and you you just that got to be really dangerous when you're dumping feed out to bulls with a sack here on the ground with them, and then you had all the then you had feed sacks to blowing everywhere so this is a a lot simpler way a little bit of a overspill but hey that's all right but yeah, so we feed six ton a month um, during the summertime, and we'll bump up about nine ton a month in the wintertime. We start feeding everything. Um, summertime, we have so much grass and other pastures, some of the stuff don't need to have to have grain also. The grass and the, and the protein blocks are plenty. But in the wintertime, when it starts getting cold at night, we'll start feeding more and so we'll bump up to nine ton a month on feed so feed, feed store likes me so i think we'll go i'm gonna feed uh killer and honky donkey real quick and uh and then we'll then we'll go up the hill so we'll grab them there you go little jack for these three guys here Follow me while I'll introduce you to the, the misfits. And that breeze is awesome. This is Moon. Hey Moon. And uh, Moon, he's what, he's kind of the ranch horse. He helps me train bull riders. Honky Donkey, and then we got Killer out here. You're good, come on boys, come on. Come on, it's dinner time. So, this is Killer. Killer, he's, it's what happens if you start smoking cigarettes when you're young, it'll stunt your growth. <laughs> Killer is like a zebu or something like that, or uh, but he's not a bucking bull. I just bought him for shits, games, and giggles. This old honky donkey here, honky donkey. Um, I bought. I really don't know why I bought him either, but um, he makes a really cool sound. This is Moon. Moon helps train bull riders. We'll ride Moon bareback up and down these hills and hollers. Uh, he really, really nice horse to to help them bull riders. And then Killer over here, he's shy, but the coolest thing about a bull is that right there, that hump. I love that hump. I love that hump. I love that hump. I love that hump. So anyway, he looks like he's bred. Looks like his his dad could have been a goat. You know, and then his mom's like, you know, his mom's a cow and his daddy was a goat. But anyway, he's cool. No honky donkey here. He just, he makes the coolest sound. Talk to him. Talk to him. All right, all right, hey. I'm gonna go feed tonight. This evening is one of my favorite times of the day is in the evenings when I get to start feeding uh, all the bulls and the cows and stuff. Um, I really don't know why, why I enjoy this time because uh, to feed everything that I feed costs me money. costs a lot of money to feed um, and to feed as much as I do. But I, I enjoy, um, I think it's the one time that I just, it's a peaceful time for me. They, all the bulls have come up and me, and 
get to be around them. They're, you know, they know I'm not after them. They know I'm not trying to catch them. They know we ain't fixing up buck bulls or something like that. You know, they're just, they know it's just dinner time. It's a happy time for them. It's a happy time for me. It's a pretty, pretty good, pretty good deal. Um, so, now you could set, check a set of cows here and um, get up here to them and see see how all they're doing. Um, all, all of our, most of our cows have kept already, but kind of check, make sure everything's good there. So, hopefully, we can find these damn cows. There. Um, that's the other thing here at the ranch. It's a lot of hills, haulers, and pastures. Um, you can't just... Uh, look out across your, your spread and, and see what you want to see because um, a lot of trees, a lot of hills, a lot of hollers and um, trying to find these son of bitches sometimes like hunting for Bigfoot. Uh, the only difference is you will find these cows. So yeah, these, these cows are good and healthy. Um, there's some calves that's ready to rest of you have. Huh? So like these guys right here. There's my herd bull right here. He's a freak. Bucket freak. Oh, he's on without the one. So. They're just looking at you like they're hungry. But they're not hungry. Look how fat they are. You know, how can you be that hungry, or how can you be hungry and be have fat on you? So, anyway, look at that one. She got a beer gut on both sides of her, just like I got. Oh, hey girls, hey girls, come on. Yeah. All these cows are bred to buck. They're they they were raised on the ranch as a baby calf, and then. If they, I, I bucked them when they were younger. If they buck, I kept them. Because uh, for me, I think when bucking bulls, I think a lot of the genetics comes from the cow. And uh, I think the, so if the cow bucks, I think she's got a really good chance of raising a, a bucking bull. If the cow don't buck, she don't have much of a chance of raising a bucking bull. And, and through my experience of over the years of raising them, that's what I found is that um, if the cow bucks, then she's got a good chance of raising a one that'll buck. So, so then you bring, you got all these cows, well then all these calves that are out here, they're bred to buck too. So it's, it's no different than race horses or dog pedigrees or, you know, if you're trying to raise the best, you got to breed the best of the best and, and build from there. There's no guarantee in nothing. Um, you know, I'm a freak of nature, but you couldn't bring me to just anybody and expect, you know, you know what I'm saying? But, but these, the, the fun thing about it for me is I need all kinds of levels of bulls. I need from the professional buck and bull to the medium buck and bull to the lower level buck and bull for the beginner. So I need all kinds. Um, the most dangerous thing on this ranch is the cows, not the buck and bulls. And you would, People, people see the big bull and they think that's just, you know, look at that energy. These cows are loaded with energy. They're loaded with meanness. They're loaded with, they're wild. Uh, the cow that jumped over the moon is in here. Um, the, these cows are very protective of their calves. Um, I'm not, you know, a lot, of, a lot of ranchers in the world probably have to Probably in other places <clears throat> with different cow herds, they have to worry about varmints like, like the coyotes and stuff, killing their calves and stuff, their livestock. Here, I'm not too worried about that because as, as you can see, the horns on these cows, uh, if, if one of the calves makes a noise, all they all come together. And uh, so they're, they're pretty much gonna whoop off the coyotes and wolves or whatever, you know, so. Uh, they're very protective of their calves. That's what makes it dangerous. When I catch them, the wean, the, the bigger calves, the older calves, I'll wean them off their mama calves, the mama cow, uh, about when they're about six months old or so. And when I, so I'll take them to a big pen 
and, and start pulling the calves from the mama. That's when it gets really, that's probably the most dangerous day. If all the bulls that I buck here at the ranch, as many bulls as I buck here at the ranch, the day I shut the gate and pin these cows and start pulling the babies away from them, that's the most dangerous day of the whole year, bar none, you know. So um, hopefully we'll be able to capture that on video for you guys uh, this, this fall when I start weaning uh, because it is, uh, it, it's, it, it's quite the ordeal. It's an amazing thing to see how protective that mama cow is and how she don't give two shits who you are, how big you are, what you're driving. Uh, she wants her baby back and uh, so um, very fascinating animals I love them to death again they're wild but they're uh, very territorial type animals too meaning that um, if they get out seem if they seem to get across the fence they know where they got out they will come back um, they're they're real territorial they know their perimeter they know where they grew up they know where they belong um, so, good stuff. Oh, oh boys, so they're just growling each other. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but it's just growling. <laughs> Coolest sound in the world. Coolest sound in the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good stuff. Good stuff. Bucking bulls, looking at my bulls, <clears throat> like probably, you know, hanging out with these guys is probably equivalent to deer hunters, uh, quail hunters, pheasant hunters, just any type, any type of hunter. Uh, and then uh, deer hunting, setting up in your tree, and here comes the buck. The excitement uh, that you get out of that, the rush. Uh, I, I, I can, uh, I can feel that. I can, I think it's the same for me. Uh, just in, uh, it's just with bulls it versus the wildlife. Good stuff. <laughs> I guarantee you that one bull, oh, bar four, he looks like he ate the clown and his barrel. It, he's, he's just huge. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. We're, uh, we're excited about the future of videos and rodeo ranching, berry ranch style is gonna get crazy. Uh, moving forward, we, we're, we're gonna be capturing more video. Video that for the last, my lifetime, I probably should have been videoing my whole life and you would be like, uh-uh. But thank you guys for watching this one. There's more to come. Remember, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends. Refers to anybody that you think might get off on this stuff. It's good stuff. More to come.